Hello everyone, I'm Aratra Kabhomek and I welcome you all to another episode of Quotes This Week on Live Law where we update you about all the important legal developments that took place across the country this week. We will begin with developments from the Supreme Court and then cover high courts and other lower courts. If you like our content, please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. In a relief to Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath, the Supreme Court has dismissed a plea challenging the dropping of charges against him in an alleged hate speech case of 2007. The bench comprising Chief Justice of India N.V. Ramana, Justice Hima Kohli and Justice C.T. Ravikumar observed that it is not necessary to go into the issue relating to the denial of sanction to prosecute the Chief Minister. However, the bench underscored while dismissing the petition that the question of law arising in this case is left open. In an important development, the Supreme Court has referred the issues pertaining to promise of freebies by political parties before elections to a three-judge bench. The Supreme Court bench comprising CGI N.V. Ramana, Justice Hima Kohli and Justice C.T. Ravikumar observed that the issues raised by the concerned parties require extensive hearing such as what is the scope of judicial intervention in such cases, whether the appointment of an expert body by the Supreme Court would at all serve any purpose and other such issues. Thus, looking at the complexity of these issues and the prayer to overrule the Supreme Court's judgment, 2013 judgment that is, of in Subramaniam Balaji case, the court has referred the matter to a three-judge bench. The Supreme Court has held that the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Court, that is the IBC, will prevail over the Customs Act. The bench comprising Chief Justice of India N. V. Ramana, Justice Hima Kohli and Justice C. T. Ravikumar opined that the customs authority can only determine the quantum of duties and levies but cannot initiate recovery proceedings. While pronouncing this judgment, C. J. Ramana stated that once moratorium under the IBC is declared, custom authorities have only limited jurisdiction to assess the quantum and they cannot take steps to recover the dues. The Supreme Court has issued notice on a batch of petitions filed seeking relief of allowing nearly 20,000 Indian students who had to return from Ukraine due to the Russian attack to complete their medical education in India. A bench comprising Justices Hemant Gupta and Vikram Nath issued notice returnable by September 5th on seven writ petitions. The Supreme Court has refused to entertain pleas seeking directions to the National Testing Agency to conduct additional sessions of the ITJ mains examination of this year for both the first and the second sessions which were disrupted owing to some technical glitches. After the bench comprising Justices D.Y. Chandrachur, A.S. Bopana and J.B. Pardiwala expressed disinclination to entertain the matter, the petitioners chose to withdraw the petition. The bench said that it does not want to interfere when the ITJ advance examination is scheduled to take place on Sunday. The Supreme Court took on record the sealed cover report submitted by the Independent Committee probing the allegations of illegal surveillance using the Pegasus spyware. A bench comprising Chief Justice of India N.V. Ramana, Justice Surya Kant and Justice Hima Kohli orally remarked that the Government of India did not cooperate with the committee and that the government had followed the same stand which it took before the court as well, whereby it refused to clearly state if the spyware was purchased or not. The bench also noted that the technical committee found malware in five of the 29 devices that were submitted to it. However, it is unclear whether the malware was in fact Pegasus. In an important development, the Supreme Court has issued notice on the petition challenging the order of the Gujarat government allowing the premature release of 11 convicts sentenced to life in the Bilkis Bano case for gang rape and murder. A bench comprising CGI N.V. Ramana, Justice Ajay Rastogi and Justice Vikram Nath, however, posed a query with respect to the legal bar on grant of remission to the convicts. During the hearing, Justice Rastogi asked senior advocate Kapil Sibyl, appearing for the petitioners, as to whether it is sufficient to say that the remission is wrong, merely because the act was horrific. Significantly, Justice Rastogi and Justice Vikram Nath 
were part of the bench which had ruled back in May this year that the Gujarat government has a jurisdiction to decide the remission in this particular case. The Supreme Court has issued notice on a petition filed by Congress MP Karti P. Chidambaram seeking review of his July 27th judgment in Vijay Mandalal Chaudhary v. Union of India, which upheld the powers of arrest attachment seizure conferred on the Enforcement Directorate by the Prevention of Money Laundering Act of 2002. A bench comprising CGI N. V. Ramana, Justices Dinesh Maheshwari and C. T. Ravikumar said that prima facie two aspects of the judgment upholding the legislation required to be reconsidered. First, regarding no legal requirement to provide ECIR copy to the accused and second, the reversal of the presumption of innocence. The Supreme Court of India has deferred the petition filed by Tista Setalwad seeking bail in the case registered by the Gujarat Anti-Terrorism Squad alleging falsification of records to implicate high state functionaries in the Gujarat riots conspiracy case. A bench comprising Justices Yuyu Lalit, Ravindra Bhatt and Sudarshan Dholia adjourned the matter to August 30th after Solicitor General Tushar Mehta appearing for the state of Gujarat sought time to make corrections in the response filed to the petition. During the hearing addressing Forrester General, Justice Lalit orally remarked that the court needs to test as to whether incarceration in the present case was required or not. The Supreme Court has noted that as per the committee appointed by the Supreme Court, Punjab SSP Harmandeep Singh Hans had failed to discharge his duties in ensuring security of the Prime Minister during his visit to Punjab in January this year. The case which had sought a probe into the security lapse during the visit of the Prime Minister to Punjab was heard by the bench led by the Chief Justice of India, N. V. Ramana. The court had earlier appointed former Supreme Court Judge Justice Indu Malhotra to probe into the matter. The Supreme Court has passed a direction to terminate the mandate of the Committee of Administrators which had been constituted by the court to manage the affairs of the All India Football Federation. The court passed this order in light of the decision taken by the FIFA to suspend AIFF which construed the functioning of the Committee of Administrators as a third-party interference. A bench comprising Justices D.Y. Chandrachur and E.S. Bopana modified its earlier directions relating to the Committee of Administrators and the elections of the AIFF so as to facilitate the revocation of the AIFF suspension and to ensure that India can host the Under-17 Women's World Cup in October this year as scheduled. Chief Justice of India N. B. Ramana has said that he has constituted a bench led by Justice D. Y. Chandrachur to decide upon the questions pertaining to the legal dispute between the Delhi government and the central government regarding the control over administrative services in the national capital. A three-judge bench of the Supreme Court had in May this year referred the matter to a constitution bench. The Supreme Court has stayed all proceedings against BJP leader Sayed Shahnawaz Hussain in connection with an alleged 2018 rape case. Hussain had approached the top court challenging the order of the Delhi High Court directing registration of an FIR against him. A bench comprising Justice Uday Umesh Lalit, Justice S. Ravinder Bhatt and Justice Sudhashna Dhulia issued notice in the plea and the matter will now be heard next month. The Supreme Court has directed status quo to be maintained in the matter pertaining to OBC reservations in Maharashtra local elections. This means that the OBC quota cannot be implemented for the time being in the 367 local bodies where the election process has already been notified. A special bench of the Supreme Court comprising Chief Justice of India N. V. Ramana, Justice Abhay S. Oka and Justice J. B. Pardiwala was considering an application filed by the state of Maharashtra seeking recall of the July 20 and July 28 orders which restrained the State Election Commission from re-notifying the election process in 367 local bodies where the election process had already been notified so as to implement the OBC quota. 
The Supreme Court has declared Section 3, Subsection 2 of the Benami Transactions Prohibition Act 1988 as unconstitutional on the ground of being manifestly arbitrary. Section 3, Subsection 2 prescribes that whoever enters into any Benami transaction shall be punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend to three years or with fine or both. The court further held that the Benami Transactions Prohibition Amendment Act of 2016 cannot be applied retrospectively. A bench headed by the Chief Justice of India delivered the judgment in an appeal filed by the central government against a judgment of the Calcutta High Court holding that the 2016 Amendment Act was prospective in nature. The Supreme Court has pulled up Baba Ramdev for making statements against modern medicine systems like allopathy. A bench led by the Chief Justice of India, N.V. Ramana, orally criticised Ramdev by hearing a petition filed by the Indian Medical Association seeking to control the smear campaign and the negative advertisements against the vaccination drive and modern medicines. C.J. Ramana, while observing that systems popularised by Baba Ramdev might not always work, remarked that he must restrain from abusing other systems. The Supreme Court has reiterated that the Mumbai Metro Rail Corporation, that is the MMRCL, would be bound by its earlier affidavit which stated that no trees have been cut or should be cut in the RA forest post the Supreme Court order dated October 7, 2019. During the previous hearing, the Metro Rail Corporation had told the Supreme Court that no cutting of trees has been carried out in the RA forest. While adjourning the hearing, a bench led by Justice Yuyo Lalit said that the Mumbai Metro Rail Corporation would be bound by the undertaking taken by them earlier. The 2021 policy places its users in a take-it-or-leave-it situation, virtually forcing its users into agreements by providing a mirage of choice and then sharing their sensitive data with Facebook companies envisaged in the policy. The Delhi High Court has observed, while upholding the proposed investigation of the Competition Commission of India into WhatsApp's privacy policy. A division bench comprising Chief Justice Satish Chandra Sharma and Justice Subramaniam Prasad dismissed the appeals filed by WhatsApp and its parent company Meta, formerly Facebook, against a single bench order declining to interfere with CCI's investigation into the 2021 privacy policy. A Delhi court has recently expressed its displeasure at the state of police investigation in the 2020 Northeast Delhi riots case where a man named Sajid, who was a complainant in the case, was surprisingly himself made and accused in an attempt to murder case that targeted him. Sajid had alleged that on February 25, 2020, while trying to escape a riotous crowd, he was hit by a gunshot. During investigation, Sajid was examined and since he had suffered an injury in the riots, it was deduced by the police that he was also a part of the riotous mob. Questioning the probe, the additional sessions judge, in an order passed on August 18th, observed, and I quote here, Sajid during investigation was made an accused one of the primary reasons was that since he had suffered a gunshot injury during the riots, he can be held to be a part of the riotous mob. By this logic, every injured person in a riots case can be made an accused. The Karnataka High Court has observed that nowadays in government offices, corruption has become rampant and no file is moved without a bribe. Justice K. Nataranjan made the observation while refusing bail to B.T. Raju, working as the assistant engineer with the Bangalore Development Authority. The Anti-Corruption Bureau had arrested him for demanding money and accepting a bribe of Rs 5 lakhs. The Delhi High Court has observed that as per Muslim law, a minor girl who had attained the age of puberty can marry without the consent of her parents and has a right to reside with her husband even when she is less than 18 years of age. Justice Jasmeet Singh made the observation while granting protection to a Muslim couple who got married in March this year as per Muslim rites and rituals. The plea was moved by a couple seeking directions to ensure that nobody separates them. The court was of the view that the POCSO Act will not be attracted in the present case as it is not a case of sexual exploitation 
but a case where the couple fell in love, got married according to Muslim laws and thereafter had a physical relationship. The Delhi High Court has dismissed the appeal filed by Kashmiri businessman Zarur Ahmad Shah Vatali, challenging the trial court order denying him bail last year on the ground of COVID-19 in connection with the terror funding case. A bench comprising Justice Mukta Gupta and Justice Anish Dayal observed that pursuant to the status report, it was revealed that Vatali was being regularly treated and was also receiving prescribed medicines and that his condition was stable and satisfactory. The bench was also of the view that as on date, it cannot be said that the COVID-19 situation is still prevalent and that the life has returned to normalcy would apply even to prisoners who are in custody. The Madras High Court has passed final orders in the case against the engagement of uniformed police officers as orderlies at the residence of higher officials in Tamil Nadu. Justice S.M. Subramaniam has directed the authorities to ensure that the orderly system is completely abolished within a period of four months. In an important development, the Allahabad High Court has granted bail to Siddiqui Kapan's co-accused Mohammed Alam in connection with the Hathras conspiracy case. UAP accused Alam has been granted bail by the bench of Justice Ramesh Sinha and Justice Saroj Yadav as it concluded that there appeared no complicity and involvement of the appellant with the terrorist activities or any other activity against the nation. Importantly, distinguishing his case from that of Siddiqui Kapan, the court has observed that while incriminating material was allegedly recovered from Kapan's possession, no such incriminating material was recovered from the possession of Alam. The Kerala High Court has stayed the Sessions Court order granting anticipatory bail to writer and social activist Civic Chandran in a sexual harassment case while hearing a plea moved by the state government challenging the bail order. In a controversial ruling that caused widespread outrage, Sessions Court Judge S. Krishna Kumar had held that the offence under Section 354A of the IPC that criminalises outraging of a woman's modesty would prima facie not be attracted if the complainant was wearing a sexually provocative dress. The Kerala High Court held that the observation of the lower court that the offence under Section 354A of the IPC is not prima facie attracted merely because a woman was wearing a sexually provocative dress cannot be justified. The High Court further observed that the Sessions Court had relied upon irrelevant materials while granting anticipatory bail to Chandran. Thank you. Keep watching Courts this week on Live Law for more such updates. See you next week. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss a video from Live Law.